Welcome to the YouTube channel for the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation. Over the course of the next few months and beyond, we will be interviewing mesothelioma experts, as well as experts in other fields that may be of interest to the mesothelioma community. And we will be posting those interviews right here on our YouTube channel. So please make sure to hit the subscribe button right away so that you're notified every time that one of those videos is posted. Today, we release our first video. This was an interview that we held with Dr. Daniel Sturman, a pulmonologist at NYU, and also a member of the board of directors of the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation. This is a somber interview uh, with Dr. Sturman. He is on the front lines of everything happening in New York right now. And here is what he had to say. Hello, Dr. Sturman, how are you? Uh, I would be lying if I was AR was okay. Yeah, I'm sure this is such a difficult time and I really appreciate you making the time for us. Um, we have a bit of a lag in terms of, um, of, the, of the conversation. Um, we didn't have it earlier. I presume it's because the internet is just buzzing with everybody trying to do things remotely. But um, first of all, I'd like to ask you a little bit about um, what's the situation in New York and what's the situation at NYU? Uh, the situation in New York is um, at a crisis stage. From a healthcare perspective, uh, we have um, the most cases of any city, any region in the United States, and uh, those cases are rising on a daily and hourly basis. We have uh, the most deaths of any region in any city in the United States, and um, those are rising on a daily uh, basis as well. Uh, we have <clears throat> critical needs for uh, medical supplies, uh, as simple as the protective uh, equipment that physicians and nurses use on a daily basis, and as technical as the ventilators that we need to keep people alive. Uh, we don't have enough physicians, uh, intensivists, to care for patients, so we've literally mobilized every doctor from every department in the hospital to work as part of intensive care unit teams. We've essentially converted nearly our entire main hospital to an intensive care unit to care for the sick patients that we have. Uh, the patients that we're seeing are of all ages uh, and backgrounds. This virus does not exclude anyone uh, from its path. And uh, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of previously young, healthy people between the ages of 30 and 50 who have no pre-existing medical conditions who are getting quite sick. So it is um, the biggest uh, crisis that I've ever seen uh, in my lifetime. Uh, as a physician or just as a human being. Um, and uh, there really are no words for what we're experiencing here. Yeah. I mean, you know, I've been trying to explain to the community because, you know, sometimes what we hear on the news, um, sometimes what we're reading is not really the accurate situation of what's happening in the hospitals. So I thought, first of all, hearing from somebody who's there, who's, you know, at the forefront of it right now, um, helps for the people to understand understand the reality of the situation. Um, in terms of our mesothelioma patients, certainly, um, you know, there's a lot of fright, there's a lot of worry, um, you know, there's a lot of decision making that's going on at this point, um, whether treatment should be continued, if it should be continued, where should it be continued. Um, you know, from a pulmonary standpoint, as a pulmonologist, Dr. Sturman, um, what can you advise our mesothelioma patients to think about or to do in this situation now I to protect that, their health? Yes, the most important thing is, uh, it sounds counterintuitive, but as much as possible, stay out of the hospital as mm -hmm. much as possible. So um, if you need to come to see your doctor, come to see your doctor in the outpatient clinic. But if you could have a, a virtual video visit with your doctor and your treatment can be administered without necessarily coming even into the outpatient clinic, I think that's important. I don't think it's necessary to disrupt your treatments right now if you're on active treatment. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we are trying to deal with our uh, mesothelioma patients and other cancer patients uh, as outpatients over the phone uh, as much as we possibly can. Um, mm -hmm. 
the, there's so much risk coming into an emergency room now, even if you came in for something completely unrelated to COVID-19, uh, of just coming in and um, the risk of acquisition from coming into a place where so many people are sick. Uh, and I would say that the other thing that's really important is that almost all the resources inside the hospital are going towards the care of these patients. And although patients with mesothelioma and other cancers and other disorders are equally as deserving, there just aren't the resources that there normally are to devote to patients with mesothelioma and other cancers in the hospital. And this is the unfortunate reality that we, we have to deal with the, the, the mass of patients that are acutely ill that are coming in, it is much harder to deal with chronic diseases in the hospital setting. Mm -hmm. So as much as patients can get the treatments that they need on an outpatient basis, uh, that is the best. And if you can talk to your doctor or your nurse practitioner uh, over the phone via video visit, if you can have prescriptions sent in electronically, even have uh, any treatments uh, done uh, outside of the normal hospital setting, the better at this pr present time. Mm -hmm. So, um, Dr. Sturman, if you were going to advise a mesothelioma patient, um, you know, what's, what signs or symptoms of COVID should they be looking for? The classic signs and symptoms are fever, cough, and shortness of breath, uh, and chest discomfort. That's very hard for a mesothelioma patient because cough, chest discomfort, and shortness of breath are three very common symptoms of mesothelioma, at least plural mesothelioma. Mm -hmm. And even patients with mesothelioma can get fever on occasion because mm -hmm. of, of the nature of the tumor and even because of the treatments that they're receiving. So it can be very hard to discern the classic symptoms of COVID-19 from what a normal mesothelioma patient might experience in a day-to-day -day basis. But we also have to remember that there are other signs and symptoms of COVID-19 that aren't classic that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. We're seeing gastrointestinal uh, presentations where people present with nausea, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. So if you have peritoneal mesothelioma, this may be very similar to the symptoms that you're experiencing from your peritoneal mesothelioma. Uh, we're seeing patients present with what seems to be innocuous upper respiratory tract infections with uh, symptoms with uh, nasal congestion, rhinorrhea, runny nose, uh, sore throat, and you may think you just have a cold, uh, and you may just have a cold, but those signs and symptoms could be COVID-19. So I think that we're realizing that more and more people, um, unbeknownst to them, can be infected uh, with the virus, uh, and even maybe if, uh, infected where they're asymptomatic. And so this it becomes doubly difficult for the medical professional because mm -hmm. you could be coming in for your routine mesothelioma visit and you could harbor COVID-19, not know it, not have symptoms, but potentially exposing the nurse or the doctor with whom you're interacting and they could then pass that on to another patient. So it becomes very complicated very quickly right now because we have to assume in both outpatient and inpatient settings that most patients, if not all, could potentially harbor COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of active treatment, Dr. Sturman, um, you know, many of our patients have, you know, uh, different pain syndromes and they take different medications for pain. We're hearing a lot on the news about uh, anti-inflammatories. Can you discuss that a little bit with, uh, with this population about the risk of an anti-inflammatory? Is it real? Is it? It is not real. It, okay. it, it is mythology. And so there's no reason if you require a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug to treat your pain, you can take it. It is mm -hmm. not going to make you get COVID-19. If you had COVID-19, there's no evidence that it's going to make you have a, a worse variety. One of, there are good things about the internet. I'm talking to you via the internet right now, right. Mm -hmm. but there are bad things as well because a lot of information gets out there that's not scientifically verified. And the one about uh, ibuprofen and other non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs is one that has not held up. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think it's very important that you have, if you have mesothelioma and you require medications to treat your discomfort, you take your medications. Thank you. And then now in terms of if there are any good symptoms that are, are new and alarming, First, first sign of defense is not to run to the emergency room, but to contact your treating physician, your medical oncologist, stay home, stay calm, and get advice from the home front rather than showing up in your office. Absolutely, as much mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Sturman, I'm not gonna keep you on. I, I know that you're working around the clock. Um, I appreciate having had this opportunity to speak to you and stay safe 
you know, you're in our hearts and our prayers. You're an important member of our community. And I'm so sorry for all of you that um, you're on the front having to fight this right now. And God bless you. Thank you, Mary. Take care. Take care.